This type of deck that Scapeshift preys upon it doesn't have a super fast clock. It has a bunch of things that die to red removal. Like, all right, so JAC. Um, I've basically gone back to the more core that we had for a long time, and I've added a few copies of pack to it. So we've got three packs and one Eternal Witness here, so kind of closer to the core that's felt good for a long time, just to see if a few packs into this core feels reasonable. Um, this hand's kind of... Oh, again, I would like to iterate that my resubs of Prime should be more to you because I watch on my phone. Thanks, Scotty. So, I'm kind of inclined to mulligan this. Well, Modern is a format that people enjoy because you can play decks that are generally underpowered and still do well with them with some consistency. Because the decks that are underpowered in Modern aren't that much worse than the decks that are really good. And by me saying I'm not enjoying the play patterns of Spirits, it doesn't mean that the deck is unplayable. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't play the deck if you don't enjoy it. It just means I'm not really finding the play patterns particularly interesting, and I don't think it's doing anything uniquely powerful enough to make encourage me to try and play it some more. Yeah, if the opponent's doing anything aggressive, this hand doesn't really accomplish anything. So I'm going to go ahead and mulligan. I think this is a keep at six. This hand is similar to the other one, but it has more cantrips. Someone asked, is the main deck silence better than a main deck path to exile? The answer is it depends on the decks you expect to play against. Silence has what I would refer to as a higher floor because silence is a card that you can cast without a target, whereas path to exile you can't cast if your opponent doesn't have a doesn't have a creature in play for you to path um well poop um i think i'm gonna go bottom carry added top bird i need to draw a second land but i also kind of need to draw a mana creature here yep i will update stream decker that is a good good suggestion exit steam here rather than have it be popping up C correct ed bingo that's why i said we need lands but we also need a mana creature there's there's a lot more lands in our deck than there are mana creatures so i'm keeping the birds with the hope that the Serum Visions is going to find us a green source. A lot of Steel Leaf Champions in Elf decks today. I don't know if this is the same person we just played against. Alright, we're very dead. Man, tough morning. Tough morning. Um, Silence is not good against Elves. Path to Exile is fine against Elves. Uh, click Submit. I think this matchup is actually pretty reasonable for us. We've got a pretty fast linear linear deck, and uh, our our nut draws a little bit better than theirs. Will do, Dougie. I don't I don't update decks during the stream as a heads up. So we had a tier three sub get added to four color guys that'll get added at the end of today's stream, but it won't be added till the end of today's stream. Yeah, and, I mean, and that's what makes Modern so much better than, you know, formats like Legacy, in my opinion. You know, in Legacy, if you show up with a pile of cards that's like a brew, you're going to get dumpstered by Sneak and Show almost every time, right? But in Modern, that's far less true. All right, I'm going to bottom this. I'm going to keep a third land. We'll play Sylvan, carry added next turn, and then hopefully kill them on three. You also talk about the bottlenecks of the JAC backs. I feel with the last few iterations, especially with Pact, uh, mana almost was never a bottleneck. In general, mana is rarely your bottleneck. Lord of the Pearl tried it. You are generally bottlenecking on cards almost every time. 
And uh, the packs are actually great because they help you not only generate mana, but they also help you not bottleneck on cards because they generate mana while being card neutral. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, because we just, like, cast Serum Visions and Hallowed Fountain, they put us on some kind of control deck, and they're just gonna die here. Sweet. Yeah, they should, should hopefully just beat a next turn. Yeah, if, if Fate Stitcher was green, this deck would be, would be absurd. If we had a green Fate Stitcher, that would be very, very good. Alright, so Fate Stitcher in our opener here means that mana is almost certainly not going to be our bottleneck. Good, good, good chance we kill them here. I believe MTG Bot is currently taking a nap. In fact, I'm going to tag Dan Bopes. I'm in, I'm in Dan's Discord. I believe, I believe the bot is currently dead. All right, for those that haven't seen this deck combo before, what it does is you cast a bunch of non-creature spells like this while looting through your deck, and it makes our creatures larger. Uh, eventually, we are able to get a flesh blood out of the sideboard and then kill our opponent that way off a of Sylvan carry added, or we kill them by attacking with Fate Stitcher. Yeah, they're, they're auto-passing. Like, what could they have? Like, they did, like, Slaughter Pact or something like that. Uh, engineered Explosives. I think I'm actually just, like, not in the market for that because we're just going to kill them this turn. So, I don't think we're in a position yet where I can start tapping down their creatures. Yes, Mana Morpho. So, basically, every spell we cast makes two mana for us. Matt Matic, thank you for the $10 donation. Put this towards Teamer Delver. I love mediocre Teamer decks. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Will do. Um, yeah, I don't really need another JAC at this point, right? Just looking to keep my cards flowing. They look like we're hitting Naya Control tomorrow, assuming nothing ends. But yeah, assuming there's no major changes, we'll probably be playing Naya Control tomorrow. All right, and now I'll start tapping down their blockers. Um, do I want a Summoner's Pack to you? I think I'm just going to go ahead and Summoner's Pack to you. Another Fate Stitcher. Should lock this game up really easily. Because the more Fate Stitchers we have too, the more, um, the more power we're going to have in play to be attacking with. So I just got to get 20 power worth uh, on these two dorks. So we just keep casting spells, generating mana, and doing stuff. All right, yep, just like keeping keeping any any non-creatures on top at this point. Two stream babies, Voltaic. Thank you for the thank you for the 18 months. It's a long time. Welcome back and thanks for the continued support. Bone just hanging out over there, dead man walking. The absence of a storm. Yeah, I mean, at least the storm counter like isn't relevant for our deck, right? So we've got that going for us. Yeah, it is kind of funny that there's no, there's no storm counter. I kind of just have like arbitrary amounts of mana at this point. Could probably stop using the fate stitchers. Spirits was really aggressively mediocre. All right, and that's actually going to be lethal. Opponent, opponent's seen the writing on the walls and is ready to move along with their lives. Um, do I want an abrupt decay in my deck now that they know what we're doing? They could have something like Damping Sphere post sideboard 
or Eidolon or stuff like that. Abrupt Decay is probably not unreasonable. Could trim like an op tier. I'm going to do that. Nah, I don't think I want Reclamation Sage. I think I'd rather have things that can kill their stuff. Yeah, we can. We have uh, Engineered Explosives, we have Abrupt Decay, and we have Glittering Wish to take Damping Sphere off the table, so. There's no, there's no guarantee that they're going to have it, have Damping Sphere, especially because they're on the white build. Because they're on the white build, I think they're more likely to have they're more likely to have creature land creatures that are hate pieces than anything else. Forgot to update the stream title. I should tweet to you that we're playing something good now. Let's do that real quick. Rex Sage for Worship. No, I don't think you... This is a deck where less is more and you don't want to overside board chat. Remember, we have Glittering Wish, four copies of it, so we're never cold. You're, when in doubt, you always want to board less with this deck because you always have access to your sideboard. This hand is very good. Turn two, Sylvan. Turn three, Ascendancy, and then we go. Yeah, I think I think this deck is very good. I think um, I think the reason why this deck isn't well represented has to do with two things. M mainly, the type of person you need to be to play this deck is kind of specific, and it's kind of awkward as well. What do you think of one grape shot in this list? I think grape shot is terrible. I think uh, grape shot doesn't solve problems that this deck has. I think when you're comboing, you have access to your flesh blood most of the time. I think Grape Shot's a really bad card when you draw it and you're not comboing most of the time. And one of the reasons why this deck is good is because most of its cards that are involved in its combo offer some amount of utility or selection when you're not comboing, which makes your deck more consistent. How do you feel about boarding out Wish for specific hate cards? The only matchup you should ever board out which Wish in with this deck, in my opinion, is against Burn because Eidolon of the Great Rumble specifically doesn't give you time to wish for things. But in every other matchup, I think boarding out Wish is wrong. Um, if you look on my website, jeffhoagland.com forward slash decklist, and click into the Just Kai Ascendancy article under High Potential, there's a link in there to something on Cool Stuff Inc. talking about that has budget options for Noble Hierarch and stuff like that. Uh, Flesh Blood is basically multicolored fling. MTG bot is currently dead. Flesh Blood is basically multicolored uh, fling. But it doesn't sacrifice the creature. It just makes your creature deal damage equal to its power. Drag Tusk was dropped from the sideboard. Yeah, basically the, the builds that had the more dedicated packed package, we kept losing with. So I'm basically dialing it back and going back to the core because I think I changed too much too quickly and it was hard for me to assess what was actually good and bad because I made too many changes. And thanks for the support, 65. He's just packed for a rub decay, right? It gets a green card, right, chat? It gets a green card. If they don't have interaction here, they should be dead next turn. All right, should be dead next turn. What matchups would you bring in Reclamation Sage? Ones where I know for sure they're going to have permanent base disruption. Ones where I am certain. If you are not certain, don't hedge. Because you have Glittering Wish, you don't have to hedge. Wild, like, I don't even think I have four copies of Manamorphose in this deck list, and Wild Cantor is definitely much worse than Manamorphose. 
Every, every card you play in this archetype that isn't a creature, that isn't a non-creature spell comes at a very real cost. And you need to have a very specific reason for putting that non-creature card or that non-spell card in your deck. <laughs> and see, the opponent boarded in Remorseful Cleric because we beat them down with Fate Stitcher last game. But we don't actually need Fate Stitcher to win the game in this deck. We get to actually win the game uh, on the back of Flesh Blood a lot of the time. So... People, people often ask, like, you know, what are the benefits of playing this deck over, like, traditional Storm? And lack of familiarity with your opponents and the play patterns that your deck is executing is a very real reason to play a deck like this. I think this deck is doing something that's objectively powerful. And when you combine that with the fact that players are often not going to have a firm understanding of what your deck is doing, I think there's a lot of upside in that. I'm a big, big, big fan of getting to get people because they don't know what's going on. You know what? There might be an argument for leaving one of those lands on top of my deck just so I could loot through it. Well, there was another land on top of the deck, so it doesn't matter. We're just making, making colors of mana here. We aren't a lock to win this game in our current state, but we're pretty strong favorite. How is the Lantern Control matchup with this deck? I would use the words unlosable to describe the Lantern Control matchup for this deck. You, you draw a lot of cards very quickly, and they have a very hard time dealing with that. All right, how do we feel about... How do you feel about just, like, going and getting another, um, another Jeskai Ascendancy here? I think I just want to go get another Jeskai Ascendancy here. Just, like, start doubling up my triggers. Because I'm not going to be able to Fate Stitcher them, um... I'm going to need to get my Sylvan Carry added to 20 power. And getting a second Jeskai Ascendancy is going to get my Sylvan Carry added to 20 power very quickly. So again, one of the reasons why I personally find this deck fun is we're not quite a sure thing until you're really deep into the game. But... So you get to you get to keep keep exploring and problem solving mid combo. It's not like when you're playing regular storm and you're just like, oh, I have a dark derp derp cast my cast my gifts on give and kill you. Like I find that combo very boring because it's not interesting, right? It's just like it's deterministic and they're dead very quickly. Whereas this gives me lots of choices during setup and mid combo to be making. As a as a magic player, I need to feel smart. I need that validation, like I've like I've done something intelligent. All right, so let's cast the Summoner's Pact here, and now I have two Jeskai Ascendancies. So every time, every time we cast a spell, we generate four mana now. It is it is Storm is a very very good Magic the Gathering deck. I would I would never say it's not a good deck. I think Storm is a very powerful, very reasonable Magic deck. I'm actually not going to loot here because I like all the cards in my hand, so I'm going to wait till I have a card that I don't like. I like how they're not auto-passing anymore. You just like think you're going to time me out here. I can almost at the point where I can stop making mana... Probably going to stop floating on the in-between here just because we have enough. And like this deck's deterministic at a certain point too, but you get pretty deep in before you're like, okay, you're guaranteed dead here. Can we stop? All right, and like now, now our kill is deterministic. Now, every time we cast a spell, our creatures get three larger, and we have we have more than enough spells to be able to get this Sylvan carry added to 20, and 20 is going to be lethal for my flesh blood. Honestly, there's probably an argument to getting the flesh blood earlier, because my opponent just might not be aware that that's how they're going to lose the game. Just to like show them. There are no twin flames in this version. Just, just I put I put uh, three summoners packs and an eternal witness into the core we had been playing previously. 
gonna decline these loots, and then I just have to cast Mana Morphos, and then cast Flesh Blood, and they'll die, because Mana Morphos will make the Sylvan carry out it a 19 power creature, and then Flesh Blood will make it a 22 power creature before it resolves. So grab Flesh Blood. And in paper, it's actually faster to win from here because you just, like, explain to your opponent every spell I cast gives my creature plus three power from here. I'm going to cast this, then I'm going to cast this, and cast this, and then Sylvan Kariadid is going to kill you with Flush Blood. So, we just have to let these triggers resolve, and then we'll go Blood, Sylvan Kariadid will 22 you, please. Actually, I didn't even need to do this, right? They're at 18. I didn't realize. I was thinking I had to do 20. I wasn't paying attention to the number that they were actually at. And, like, even if we didn't have Lethal here, Glittering Wish can grab, like, Scarscale Ritual to draw us two additional cards, which is nice. Watch them have, like, the, uh... Watch them have, like, the White Pact here or something. And people, like, often board in Graveyard Hate against this archetype. Like, Graveyard Hate is something that comes in a lot in my experience playing this deck. Especially when you kill them with Fate Stitcher. People are like, oh, they're a Graveyard deck. I'm never going to get my Graveyard Hate and get them. And you're like, nope. I'm just going to go ahead and combo you this way. Yeah, if they see Witness or Fate Stitcher, yep. All right, all ready for the second match in this very wonderful league to pop. We just like to say thank you to everybody who's hanging out here today. Welcome. My name is Jeff Hoglin. I'm a full-time streamer, memer, and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30 plus hours a week. I start at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time uh, every weekday, and I go till about 3 o'clock. If you're enjoying my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are quite literally the people that keep me employed here full-time. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without all their very wonderful support. If you're one of the many people in the world who has Amazon Prime, if you link your Amazon account to your Twitch account, you get Twitch Prime included with that for free. And Twitch Prime gives you a free channel subscription every single month to a channel of your choice here on Twitch. Uh, past subscribing, you can also support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. Cardsphere.com will love to help you turn some of your cards into other cards directed with other players. There's no haggling. They just take 1% fee off the top. Good morning, Anner. Inkedgaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code JEFF12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. Coolstuffinc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code JEFF5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. And of course, this stream wouldn't be possible without viewers like Anironix, Justin Nivik, and all y'all out there. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Remember, if you're enjoying yourself, make sure to hit the follow button. Uh, this hand needs a... Uh, mana creature ideally to be really quick but pretty reasonable hand probably going to go ahead and go uh misty rainforest for breeding pool cast serum visions on one looking for sylvan carry added noble hierarch or um birds of paradise my primary deck in paper is green white vizier combo i get so many wins by opponent's sideboarding wrong people love to bring in false silver bullets yep yep just Playing a, a deck that's doing something powerful and proactive and a little bit off the beaten path is generally a great recipe for success. Reduce the competitiveness of the deck significantly. Eh, probably not. I don't know that I'd play them at a... I don't know that I... I wouldn't play any budget deck at a major tournament, but if you're just, like, playing local tournaments, they're certainly fine. So, even if we don't find a mana creature here, because we have Jeskai Ascendancy in hand, we're setting ourselves up to potentially win on turn four, which is nice. All right, Birds of Paradise and Sylvan Carry added here. Oh, I kind of messed up, right? I'm going to bottom this, top this. Put this into play past the turn here. The Tron matchup's okay for this deck. Um, Eldrazi Tron's actually a little bit harder for us because they tend to play Chalice of the Void. But Green Tron is pretty reasonable. We're going to get to go ahead and play Sylvan Carry added here and then uh, likely kill them on our next turn. 
was wondering if Chad is a good one of in blue white terminus. My deck list on my website has a has a getting to the trials in it, Mason. Jeffhoagland.com forward slash deck list. You can find can always find my latest stuff there. If they carn one of our lands, we're gonna need a zero mana thing next turn. Okay, they're killing one of our lands. So we're we're gonna need a zero mana spell or a land tier in order to combo off. So Hopefully we draw one of those two things and get to kill them. That's a creature. Um, I think I'm just going to play Noble Hierarch and pass here. I don't think I want to play Ascendancy and expose it to stuff. And also comboing with multiple mana creatures makes things a little bit easier. But if they have like Land Oblivion Stone here or like an Ugin, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And by a lot of trouble, I mean I'm going to concede. If they just have, like, Worm Coil here, we could be fine. Uh, Karn gives us redraws towards being fine. So hopefully they just, like, dirtle around a little bit here. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're dead at this point. Don't. When they have when they have their best draws, we don't have time to stumble. So we needed to draw an engineered explosives, a summoner's pact, or a land on turn uh, four in order to kill them through the through the world breaker, and we did not, so we died. Um, this is a matchup where silence is pretty reasonable, and engineered explosives is not. Um, I don't want to bring in the fourth silence. I think I'd much rather just uh, just like be as linear as possible, and this card is just better than engineered explosives because, for instance, like. That turn where they cast the World Breaker and put us behind so we couldn't kill them. You just like upkeep silence them on turn three and time walk them effectively. So silence is basically time walk in this matchup a lot of the time. The Tron matchup is favored for this deck, but it's not unlosable. You know, when Tron does Tron things, it has a chance in basically every matchup. This deck did not always have an Eternal Witness. When we added Summoner's Pact, I added one Eternal Witness as a utility creature for it. Because when you have copious amounts of mana, let Summoner Pact be two spells, basically. Because you get to go Summoner's Pact, grab Eternal Witness, Eternal Witness, back a spell, and then cast another spell. So the, the new thing that we are trying today are the summoner, three Summoner's Packs and a copy of Eternal Witness. I've trimmed uh, copies of Ops that we were playing previously, as well as a, a Noxious Revival and a Cerulean Wisp to fit these cards in. We've tried other packed iterations of the deck in the past, but they were pretty drastically different, doing things like cutting Fate Stitcher and Nagging Thoughts, and I think those iterations made too many changes and affected the integrity of the deck a little bit too much. I think this deck's very good against Ad Nauseam. Silence is good in that matchup, and we just get to race them very effectively. Any verdict on the Basic Forest? So, basically... I just, I dialed it back, chat. I know we talked about a lot of possible different things, and Twin Flame may or may not be good, but basically, I fell victim when we were playing the last couple of leagues with this deck to something that a lot of people do incorrectly when testing decks, and that I changed too many things at the same time, and... Because I changed that many things, I then wasn't able to accurately understand why we were losing. So I changed a bunch of stuff, our results started being worse, and now I wasn't able to really understand like what exactly we changed that was causing our results to be worse. So I've not tried to build with Twin Flame and Nagging Thoughts. Heavy. I don't I don't play matches of magic off stream chat. So basically go look at my YouTube, go look at the go look at the paid deck list page on my website. Your answers to your questions like, have you tried this? If it's not there, I haven't tried it. Yeah, I think this deck is fine. I say this constantly when people talk about brewing decks in modern. Um can can your deck kill people on turn two or turn three with some consistency? If yes, it's probably fine. And this deck can do that while also being moderately interactive. We're looking for mana creatures here, and then Ascendancy. Uh, this is pretty bad for us. We're probably probably just going to get run out of this game. We mulligan to kind of a mediocre hand, and then our cantrips have not found us any of the cards we're looking for here. Yeah, Inner. This was this was a great a great issue. I think it's actually the deck that has the most videos of any playlist on the website at this point.
We 3 2 and 4 1 with it very consistently. Yay, the bot is back. Yay, bot. I think the summoner's packs are good, which is again why I've included summoner's packs in this build as the only change because I really I really want to get a metric on if the summoner's packs are a good inclusion or not. They're looking for ascendancies and mana creatures, and we're just continuing to draw lands. It's really unfortunate. Do I like this deck or the blue-red tempo deck more? I, generally speaking, enjoy playing fair magic decks more than unfair magic decks because decks that tend to have a fair, proactive game plan in general allow you to feel smarter and feel like your choices had a larger impact on the matches that you played. A lot, a lot of these combo decks, um, when you lose... Their, their game, while well, this deck does have some interaction and some play to it, a lot of the games you're going to lose with this archetype are games like this, right? I mulliganed, I kept a handful of cantrips, we've looked at like 40 extra cards, and I haven't found a mana creature or anything else that's relevant. We're just, we're just going to brick off and die. And that's, that's unfortunately the reality of playing a deck like this sometimes. Sometimes your deck just doesn't work. And like, some amount of the time... Um, you know, your, your deck, um, your fair deck is just going to get run out of the game. But in my opinion, emotionally, that feels differently to me than when this, a deck like this just doesn't work. No, Walking Ballista is not good. You should go again, jeffhoagland.com forward slash deck list. Search for Jeskai Ascendancy or JAC. You're going to find... You're going to find a thing in there that's got a link to uh, articles and resources on the deck. And one of them includes budget deck lists. So if you want to build the deck on a budget, I've got that available to you. You just need to go ahead, go ahead and find the resources that I've already put out there. There is, I think in magic there is a strong bias for a lot of people towards playing fair decks especially people that play a lot of magic because playing decks that are fair that tend to be more interactive tend to give you kind of more validation as a person is the only real way i can i can feel to put it and i mean like we didn't even really get tron that game like our deck just didn't do anything, right? Like our opponent could have been playing one of four dozen different decks in modern and we just like, our deck fumbled and we died. And that's just like how it works. So, Summoner's Pact isn't a tutor in this deck, Misfortune. Summoner's Pact isn't being used to find mana creatures because we don't generally have four mana when we cast it. Summoner's Pact in this deck is a free spell that technically can trips by replacing itself that also um it can trips by replacing itself god this is bad that also um it can trips by replacing itself that also triggers just guy ascendancy Uh, this is, looks like Grixis Shadow, which is a terrible matchup for us. Uh, Grixis Shadow basically devours spell-based combo decks like this, just chews us up and spits us out. Um, our hand isn't particularly good, which is not going to help the fact that this is a bad matchup. So, Grixis Shadow preys upon decks like what we're playing, and Storm, and Ad Nauseam, and basically just any, any deck that's spell-based in a combo deck. Grixis Shadow tends to be a very strong favorite against with their discard spells, cheap threats, and counter spells. No, yeah, I think I think Summoner's Pact is very good in this deck, but to say it, Summoner's Pact adds consistency to this deck, I think shows a misunderstanding of like what we're actually expecting the card to do for us. So oftentimes deck thinning is pretty statistically insignificant, but in this archetype specifically. Deck thinning is often pretty relevant because when you combo, you draw such a significant portion of your deck. 
So while I agree in general, deck thinning is generally something that people count on too often as being relevant, in this deck specifically, I think deck thinning is exceedingly relevant. Just, I, I just, you know, <laughs> is that rude? I don't, sometimes I don't, sometimes I don't know if I'm being rude or not, but just like, I don't, I feel like that might have been rude, but I, was it a real question? I also like am like unsure if that's a real question or so I'm just going to respond with those. And yeah, maybe they actually don't know. Maybe they actually don't know. Would you say deck thinning in other decks is completely irrelevant or statistically insignificant? I would say those are the same thing. I would say completely irrelevant and statistically insignificant are arguably the same. Jeff does social media is the best. Thank you for the bits. I appreciate it. Uh, put this land into play to play around a soft stub here. Watch us get double soft stubbed. John, thank you for the six month resubscription there. Gosh, we're actually about to get double soft stubbed, aren't we? Why? Why would I open my mouth and say a word like that? Maybe. Why? Why would I open my mouth? Why would I open my mouth and let those words fall out, chat? Why do you let me say these things, chat? <laughs> mm. Deck thinning always adds some values. No, completely disagree, Malk. Unless you were intending to sacrifice the fetch land anyways, if you are spending any amount of resources to deck thin, you're doing something that's hurting you. There's a delay, Jeff. I guess the good news is, since they if they drew a threat here, they now have don't have another stubborn denial in their hand. We can pact for witness and witness back the ascendancy. It's slow, but it's aligned. Oh, there's flashing back looting. That's good for us. Do you refer to people? I do actually refer to people IRL as chat on occasion. It's not it's not a good scene, chat. It's not a good scene. Are they auto-passing? So in paper, I would play a land here so I don't get soft stubbed again. But my opponent's auto-passing, so I'm gonna punish them for doing so. And keeping keeping the land in my hand here is valuable because it gives me an extra card to discard when we find a spell next turn, hopefully. So if I was playing a paper tournament here, I would play basic island to not get soft stubbed. Would require double soft stub again, but because they're auto-passing there, I'm just going to go ahead and not do that. All right, any non-creature spell, please. Give me a cantrip. Give me a glittering wish. Just, oh, right, I have to pay for this. Forgot about that. All right. Non-creature spell, please. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. I thin by surgically extracting my shadowborn apostles. Yep.
So if we can steal this game one, we can have a good chance to win the set. So I feel like we can usually steal a one post board game on the back of ley line. This chump might be aggressive here. If you aren't drawing most of your deck, thinning is not significant, generally speaking. <sighs> Remember when I said the losses always feel bad? Because they're games where your deck just doesn't work. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to run the no blocks here. There is not a functional replacement for Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage is a unique card at what it does. Uniquely powerful in the card advantage that it generates. For those that are that are new to this archetype, there are 16 lands in our deck. Dead to both removal and burn spells here. Uh, we're not we're not dead yet. We're not dead on board. We can we can draw a spell on combo next turn after jumping both of these. I'm surprised they didn't do that pre-combat to try and find removal. It's a it's a thoroughly frustrating game of magic. Which again, like, you know, when people talk about would you play this, just like the next Infinite cards are just like cards that, that win us the game, most likely. Uh, so, the, one of the reasons why this matchup is hard and um, is because the opponent's deck attacks us from multiple angles. They have both counter spells and discard spells, and this archetype. Because it's a combo deck, you really can't afford to board in both anti-discard spells and anti-counter spells. So I'm choosing to board in Leyline of Sanctity to play against their discard spells. And if they have a bunch of stubborn denials, we're going to be in trouble. They also have uniquely fast pressure. Correct. They have they have efficient disruption that they back up with a very good clock. This is a Jerkshire's Grixis Shadow is a bad matchup. All right, I feel like we should continue this story on stream. If you need to see a piece of. Graveyard hate to have a chance in a given matchup. You either need to load up on it four plus pieces or just accept that you are punting that matchup. Like if your if your deck is bad against graveyard decks, boarding in two cards and expecting to find them in both post board games is absurd like that's just not gonna happen this hand is very good except both of our lands are gemstone mines but it's certainly a keep another reason why the opponent's deck is good against us is in addition to discard and counter spells and a fast clock they also have creature removal and we need creatures to combo with this deck so oh let's slide on down shall we Yeah, I think the I think the JAC deck is very reasonable. If you're looking for a sweet combo deck to play, it's a little bit different. This is a great choice. Yeah, that's also true, Jackal Girl. The one the one thing the opponent's deck does to kind of punish itself for for what it's doing, we aren't able to punish them further in.
there's a very good chance at this point we're just these gemstone mines are gonna cost us the game what if you have trinket mage and thirst for knowledge can you find your graveyard hate fast enough the graveyard decks that you need graveyard hate against in modern don't give you time to cast a three mana spell to find your graveyard hate to cast the next turn the reason why the graveyard decks in modern are good is because they're very quick at what they do that's that's why they're good abundant growth is actually a great draw here because it's going to save one of our gemstone mines So we get to go tap carry added growth of mine uh, no blocks on this if they have stubborn denial we're going to be in a lot of trouble here but we don't really have the luxury of playing around things just need to hope like their hand is a bunch of removal and discard spells i think so we're into 15 here they have another threat I think rest in peace is too slow as graveyard here. Now I think it depends on your deck and what your. All right, we're dead. Good beat. So tough, tough beat against Tron. Tough matchup against Death Shadow. It's just how it goes if we run the last two off here and be. This is mediocre, but I think it's a keep. Is Leyline good in this matchup? What is it stopping? Just gonna... Fate Stitcher is really awkward when you draw a lot of them. Uh, if there's something like a uh, blue-white control deck, Fate Stitcher just like being cast is kind of okay. Uh, we are 1-2 and two in this league. We beat Elves, we lost to Tron, we lost to um, whatever that other deck is. Uh, it's Crystal Shadow. For a true professional, we'll just rip an Ascendancy off the top here and get him next turn. Uh, I'm actually going to Fetch Shock here before we get going. So that way, if I'm bottoming cards, I don't have to redraw them until later. That's unfortunate. Uh, I think I'm just going to take the Wisps here since I have a bunch of Fate Stitchers in my hand. Definitely just looking for enough non-creature spells to be able to go off with once we put a Jeskai Ascendancy into play. This uh, collective brutality, yeah, that's rough. So we lose our opt here, and then we actually just can't cast anything next turn because this needs a this needs a target in play to cast it. Aggressive discarding fatal push here. They must be like they must have a bedlam reveler in hand, right? And I want a bedlam next turn. Okay, I guess we're just gonna like trip visions this turn. 
I'm just going bottoms up here and just like digging aggressively for an ascendancy. There's a deck list on your screen via the Stream Decker widget. If you don't have access to the Stream Decker widget for whatever reason, you can type exclamation point deck in chat to get a link to the deck list. gotten gotten a touch dismantled here our hand also is just like very bad too we've had a we've had a hard time finding just guy ascendancy today like this this game we're you know 20 cards into our deck and we've bought them five or six cards and just haven't found a glittering wish or an ascendancy and i sword back before justin gets here Okay, so we found that. Um, now we need to find uh, creatures. Sylvan, Sylvan Awakening is very, very bad. I think any deck that can kill its opponent by the third turn of the game is very reasonable. I don't think there's an objective answer to that question, I'll bite your legs off. Fallen Dark, thank you for the three month three subscription there. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for the quarter of a year. Happy birthday. That's true. MTGO technically has a rating system, but it's not really applicable for most for most purposes. A little too late there. How often do you want to flip your thing? That's a question only you can answer for yourself. How many is too few? I don't know. How often, how often do you want your thing to flip? Yeah, it's been a little bit medium so far today. It's fine. So I play lots of different decks. Makes it makes it easier to uh to pivot off and get get better restarts the the blue white spirits that kind of kind of soured the start of the mood today for sure archetype feels severely underwhelming i've played this deck enough to know when you're just like you know sometimes you go through half your deck without finding seven copies of your combo card and just like that's just how it goes and that's okay like you know that's magic Game has game has some variance by design. If you're not if you're not okay losing um losing games like that, you're not going to be this isn't gonna be magic's not a good game for you. Sure.
I mean, to be fair, Burgle, when you're running medium, decks that are more interactive are definitely better decks to be playing with. In in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Fair Hearthstone has a lot less variance than Magic. We're gonna face Trod, Ted Strike Tip. I actually think, and I'm sure I'm gonna get dumpstered by Trod now that I'm saying this out loud, but I actually think Black Green Rock is a good Trod matchup. Just for the record. I would like to be on record that Black Green Rock is a decent green Trod matchup. Just apply cream. Hearthstone has more random. So here's the thing. Magic is better at lying to its players about, about its cards by not putting the word random on them. Collected Company doesn't say randomly grab two three-cost creatures out of your deck and put them into play, but it might as well say that, right? That's like effectively what it does. My body is ready to be Blood Moons. That's not the land they'd be fetching if they were Blood Mooning us here, I don't think. I guess it could be, because they want double red. Campbell. Ooh, that's... That's a tough nut to crack. Ah! Remember, if you're going to disagree with something that I've said, you got to post validation for me. You can't... You can't just tell me I'm wrong. That's not allowed. You got to say Hearthstone has more variance at the higher levels because and I'm going to I'm going to disagree with you and say Magic has far more variance than Hearthstone because Magic players are just so numb to resource variance, they don't realize how much variance it adds to the game. Coco's, yep, it actually causes you to hit zero creatures sometimes. Um you could maybe argue that I'm supposed to take the Glittering Wish there, because Glittering Wish gives me a way to kill Campbell. It's very possible. Hit five lands, Coco, yep. Can I stockpile my monthly democracy until Artifact comes out? Sure. All right. We've got, we have a very finite number of spells we can cast here, chat. We need, we need a Glittering Wish, which is why it might have been right to just take the Glittering Wish and play these two creatures last turn. The problem with playing these two creatures is that one, they didn't block, and two, um, what's the two I'm searching for? And two, they didn't uh, do other things. The problem here now is, even now that I found Glittering Wish, we've drawn so many non-creature, or so many, we haven't drawn enough creature spells to necessarily be able to finish comboing once we take the Campbell off the table. And we're just keep drawing bricks here. So I need I need to find a cantrip with the looting off this abrupt decay. So I get I get to abrupt decay Campbell here, but if I don't find a cantrip off this the loot effect on casting this abrupt decay, we're going to brick. And if we find a cantrip there, we're still gonna need to run hot from there on out to make sure we can actually win the game. Alright, that's a glittering wish. What does that do for me? So Glittering Wish, um, at this point, Scarscale Ritual is castable because I have a land drop here. So now I'm potentially going to be choked on mana this game. So getting Scarscale Ritual here. Oh, God. All right, we're, we're running hot, chat. 
There was uh, there was a donation there. There is a cut the line donation. Hey Jeff, can we get four color geist with updated played next? That was sweet. Thank you for the absurd support fall and darken. Yeah, we're totally gonna play the four color geist deck again next. 10, 10 out of 10. So this gets a scar scale ritual, which kind of helps us get over the do we have enough cards hump? And mana morphos will hopefully get us past the do we have enough mana hump? This will kick us up to three mana here and give us some more card selection. So I'm gonna make uh, blue blue here probably. The reason why Hearthstone feels like the more RNG is because the cards explicitly say it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's a big part of it. I think the fact that the cards explicitly say random on it brings adds it off it it makes it harder for the fact that the variance is there to be to be present all right so now that we have fate stitcher we should be we should be home free at this point the last the last possible bottleneck we could have had this game was mana and fate stitcher means we're not going to be bottlenecked on mana that does bump green black rock to tomorrow fragnads Now I have plenty of mana to do this. I need to go ahead and cast Nagging Thoughts. So that was good. We were, I feel like we were owed some run hops after how, how poorly we've run so far today. I feel like, I feel like the universe owed us something, chat. I'm not going to say we deserved it, but we kind of deserved it. Yeah, honestly, so the person that submitted that four-color deck called it four-color control, but I called it four-color geist when I posted it to YouTube because really it's more of a tempo deck than a than a control deck, I think. It's more of a tempo deck than a control deck. All right, so we just need another Glittering Wish at some point here, and then we're going to go ahead and... Uh, and kill him dead. Is the matchup Hearthstone has a lot more unwinnable and unlosable matches. Match yeah, and that's fine. Yeah, I I would I, I I might agree with that that you could argue that Hearthstone has more matchup variants, and that's that's a very fair assessment. But that's not that's not where in, in my experience a lot of people approach coming at Hearthstone from. Uh, no, I would play Wandering Fumarol. That's why it's in my deck. I think Wandering Fumarol is worth playing. I think. People tend to focus too much on the games that Wandering Fumarol loses them, and they don't appreciate the matches that it wins them. Basically, you just don't appreciate him. Good, good guy or gal opponent. They're, uh, they they asked what the win condition was. They're like, I assume I'm dead. What's the win condition? It's like, these fate stitchers are going to get really large and tap your blockers and kill you. And they're like, yep, sounds good. <laughs> it's not Wandy's fault. He's not flashy like Tar Pit or Ravine. Yep. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm happy with how we boarded. Just gonna go ahead and run it back. And here, here's the sweet thing now. Because we got to kill them with Fate Stitcher this game, um, they're almost certainly gonna board in Graveyard Hate in this next game. I think this is in the range of keepable. It doesn't have a ley line, but... One thing that's actually sweet in this deck is you can actually cast Leoline, which is nice. Um, it's also got like double carry added. And can, I can always tell when somebody doesn't have enough experience playing this deck 
when they suggest cutting Sylvan Carry added. This is very quietly the best card in this deck. This, this is the card that makes it difficult to interact with you, which is ideal. You want to be difficult to interact with. Not taking a carry added to me implies either they they can't answer the second one, so they're just like, no, they're going to let us have both, or it could scarily imply that they have something like Engineered Explosives or Anger of the Gods. Summoner's Pact was not always part of this bit. It was not always part of the deck. More biddies for green back, please. Thank you, Fragnads. Yeah, that's fine. We can do Mardu Pyro tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you for the support. So... Hopefully we're a professional and just ripping Ascendancy here. Yep. I'm gonna run the gamble here, I think. No, ga no gamble, no future, chat. No gamble, no future. It's a gamble, Burgle, because they left us carry added with their discard spell, so that could imply that they have a sweeper. I had to see the Ghost of the Dragon team up today. It sounded right up my alley. Perfect. I think they're going to make a good team. I like me some Nickel Bolas. Ding. So, hopefully they're dead here. This is what Summoner's Pact is in the deck for, so it lets us cast a spell to trigger Ascendancy without having a, um, without having mana to cast a spell. And then we get to get card advantage off of Nagging Thoughts here. Sweet, pretty, should be, should be a strong favorite to win from here. Not, not a lock by any means, but definitely, definitely a strong favorite. Um, let's go ahead and Cerulean Wisps here. Remember, Cerulean Wisp is going to untap the creature it's targeting when it resolves, so make sure to float a mana with it. Uh, we are getting in danger of breaking off here. So we get, we get a loot, and I guess we have enough mana that we can, we can Eternal Witness a spell back to. But we definitely need some non-creature spells here. <laughs> Alright, well... If they have a piece of graveyard heat here, we could be in a lot of trouble. If they have if they have a surgical extraction here. I guess sleight of hand is our best one here. Sleight of hand gives us the least chance of breaking off and dying. So we get we get a loot plus we get to look at two. We're really looking for like a glittering wish here. So that way we can draw two. Okay, Manamorphose means uh, we're not dead yet. We got that going for us. Yeah, if we would have got nagging thoughts, we would have, we'd have a fate stitcher in the bin right now, right? Which is which is potentially relevant. Remember that time we had enough mana to cast Leyline of Sanctity because we had plenty of mana and we were breaking off? Reference Farm remembers. Alright, so this is an actual decision. 
Um, do do I cast Summoner's Pact? Because if this misses, if this misses, I lose the game because I've already cast a Summoner's Pact and I can't pay eight next turn. What are what are our odds of hitting here? We don't we don't have another witness. There's only one witness in this build. All right, I'm gonna do this the smart way. Let's do it by doing math. So, uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I've got sixteen non-creature spells out of my deck non-creature i've got 16 16 spells out of my deck so i've got four ley lines how did i say but i've ordered in four ley lines and i cut this this and this so how many how many bricks do i have in my deck to start i've got 22 thank you for the three month resubscription there i appreciate it kanamis so we have 29 bricks in our deck to start. So we have 29. So there's 13 bricks in my deck right now. So there's 32 cards. Matt Maxson with the $10 donation. It's my birthday and would love to push Mardu above rock. <laughs> Sounds good. No, I don't lose if I pass right now. I could cast Noble Hierarch and then pay for the one pact I've already cast. The other question is, do I actually have enough resources in my deck to kill them if I pass the turn here? Yeah, so what, we're... We're what, we're what percent to brick and die? Yeah, I think, I think we're just supposed to pass here. I think we're supposed to pass. More for Mardu. Thank you, Konamis. All right. Would we have died? We'd, we'd have hit, chat. We'd, uh, we'd have hit. All right, well, let's start. Let's start with Summoner's Pack. Frag Dad, thank you for the bits for rock. We need a graphic to show the Mardu versus Green Black Race. All right. Well, I think, I think Mardu was ahead to start, right? Yeah, Mardu was ahead of Green Black. So Mardu currently has 78 and Green Black has 73. Un normally I would just, I would just run, run long, but unfortunately I don't have the option to do that today. Because Jake's back in school now. All right, so let's do this to start. Untap and get a loot on. There's the glittering wish. All right, we should we should be good to kill them from here. I think. In my experience, flashback spells are clunky. 
Every card you put in your deck that costs more than one mana comes at a pretty real cost, usually. Uh, no, I don't play limited on this channel. If you're looking, if you're looking for someone that's going to be playing limited, this is not the channel for you. There are plenty. There are plenty of great content producers that basically all they do is play limited. I am not one of them. We we play modern because there aren't enough people that only play modern. For the right amount of dollars, I'll play anything. But generally speaking, no, we don't do limited here. Black, green, rock it is. That's 83 for black, green, rock. Listen, chat, remember, everything gets played eventually. Everything gets played eventually. But if people want to bid for my love and affection, I don't, I'm not going to complain. This font adjuster not work. There we go. Konami, smart doom. <laughs> All right. All right. We got one more match here. We got one more match. Whatever is ahead between green, black, and Mardu at the end of this next match will be will be the last deck for today. Green black's up by a point. Green black, green black's up by one point. Paging Dr. PZ. <laughs> uh. Dr. P. Rizzle. All right. Well, after a medium start, I feel good. I feel like we had to make some good choices there and ended up ended up getting paid off. Would love to be on the play for the last one. See if we can salvage a 3-2 here. Uh, this seems pretty reasonable. Mardu, please, plus a new cheer badge. Green, black, rock from Cage World. Oh, no. Now it's a tie. Now it's a tie. Oh no! Oh no, chat! What do I do with the tie? What's the last big MTGO event I played in? Uh, I played uh, a Mox monthly tournament while dressed as an owl earlier this year. That means either gets played. Mardu tiebreaker, yep. Mardu is the best Judd. <laughs> Sarge, thank you very much for the brand new Twitch Rebs for today. I appreciate that. Welcome. Mardu, Mardu, Mardu. Man, there's a lot of Mardu lovers in chat today. Owls aren't real. No way, green, black. I feel like you're you're a one-person green, black army, Fragnads. You're one you're a one-person green black. Green black army. All right, so I'm going to lead. So this is this is really small here, but I want to lead on sleight of hand here because if I find a one mana creature, I want to be able to put it into play and this gives me the best chance to find a one mana creature. Uh, I'm actually going to take a steam vents here because I don't really want to start losing my gemstone mines here. This bidding war is so cute. I kind of feel bad stopping it. Hey, we drew Noble Hierarch. Okay, and we definitely don't need more lands. So let's go ahead and bottom these. Just so we're clear, I don't care. Put these towards the current loser. <laughs> there's, there's a real anarchist right there. Just to be clear, I don't care. Put these towards the current loser. <laughs> Oh, that's 
great. Um, I'm gonna cast a wire cure. <laughs> Green, black, fragnads. Fragnads bringing in the big guns here. Fragnads bringing in the big guns. That's 26. All right, it puts us up to puts us up to 129. All right, I I just I just want chat to be aware that I have I have messaged it was 28. It was 28. You're right. I have messaged my boss and asked if she can possibly come home early to get Jake off the bus. So I'm I'm, I'm going to find out if it's potential that I could do both. No, we're actually over 100 now, Justin. Green Black's at 131 and Mardu's at 109. Yep. I will not go quietly into the night. Am I getting blood moons? I think we're getting blood moons. And you know what's great about blood moons yet? You call your wife your boss? Yeah, because she is. All right, so now we're actually going to make green mana with this. We'll go green, blue, and then I'm going to cast this on here, and then we'll go red, white, cast just guys I didn't see here. I'm just waiting for Justin to slam 200 for blue white. Serious question. If we're playing Summoner's Pack, it's a free trigger on JC. Is there any merit to playing the red pack for the same reason, but we get a 4-4 four, four to receive triggers and we can attack? So Sarge, we're not just playing it for the free trigger. We're also playing it because it's card neutral. So Summoner's Pact replaces itself with another card, which is a big deal when we're comboing. Uh, four color geist. I guess technically I could add four color geist. So four color geist has 52 plus whatever it had in the queue. So four color geist has 52, has 163. So four color geist is still winning by a significant chunk. Four color guys was gonna be at sixty three and then had a had a had a hunter ball thrown at it. How did blue white reflector go? Really poorly. I am not a fan of the spirits archetype. So, how do we feel about? Oh, they took my summoners pack. I was actually, I was actually about to say I might cast summoners pack here. Four color was at 11, but it had other people donate for it before the $100 things optic. Had other people donate prior. So, I think I'm just passing here and playing the bird. I'm not going to stop the bidding war, but if you want to go above, you're in control. That's not going to work. I don't I don't think we care about the blood moon, Zach. I think I think my plan is to kill them through the blood moon. I think if I hadn't hit the abundant growth, I probably would have taken the blood moon off the table. But because I have the abundant growth to just like keep casting my spells and playing magic, I think I just don't care. Blood Moon's like, okay, the, the fact that my opponent is combining Blood Moon with removal for our creatures is what's winning them this game. So, 
Blood Moon is reasonable if you're able to keep my mana creatures off the table. And because we haven't found a Sylvan carry added yet this match, um, or this game, if Blood Moon is being reasonable against us. I think generally speaking, this deck's pretty resilient to Blood Moon between uh, Abundant Growths and Mana Morphos and all of our Rainbow creatures, but I think... Uh... Yeah, carry added. Carry added is very good matches like this. We are unfortunately dead in three at the moment, so I'm probably going to be manamorphosing next turn if we if we don't draw anything relevant. Are they going to begin sculpting our minds. Jeff is the world's best bookie. He has all these people betting against each other regardless of who wins. He's the only one that gets paid out. I mean, you could argue that absolutely everybody gets paid out on this channel. Because, oh, actually, that's exactly what we wanted to draw, right? That, that, that's an instant speed mana creature. This is, this is actually the best draw in our deck at the moment. Needed, needed Fate Stitcher. I'm going to make blue, blue here. I'm going to put Fate Stitcher into play. We could, we could very likely win from here. All right, so I'm going to make white mana. I'm going to go ahead and... We drew the other Fate Stitcher! We're doing it! We're doing it! This deck is great. I like running hot. All right, we're making up for how bad we ran earlier, chat. We're making we're making time for how bad we ran earlier. They're dead! All right, I'm not going to say we're a sure thing because you're rarely a sure thing with this deck, but we're actually pretty close to being a sure thing at this point, right? Like, pretty close. How's that blood moon now? Yep. How's your, how's your blood moon over there, opponent? Thank goodness. Yeah, blood moon doesn't punish decks like this. Blood moon punishes fair, interactive mid-range decks. All right, what am I getting here? Uh, scar scale ritual, scar scale ritual. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and diddle this. I'm going to go ahead and diddle this. I'm going to go ahead and cast Manamorphose. All right, we might be a sure thing at this point. So I'm going to untap these lands. I'm going to loot and discard this nag. Why did we ever try and cut Fate Stitcher from this deck? Why did I ever try and cut Fate Stitcher from this deck, chat? That was a huge mistake. Huge mistake. I need like, I really need to find royalty-free carnival music for moments like this. Like, des just desperately need royalty-free carnival music. Stop killing him! He's dead! Stop killing him! Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cat- oh, oh, this still hasn't resolved yet. Right, sorry, forgot- forgot we had a spell on the stack. Alright, we're- we're deterministic at this point. It's just like- Going through the motions. And this is the part where you could explain to someone in paper, like, you're gonna die, I have to, like, go through the motions and, like, cast all these spells, but at the end of it, these Fate Stitchers are going to attack you as very large, gentlemen. Tap- I feel like I should tap the Blood Moon just to- I'm gonna tap the blood moon. I'm gonna message them in chat. I wanted you to feel like the blood moon did something, so I tapped it. I tapped it. <laughs> ice, ice, baby. Do 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 do. Do, do, 
Do, do, do. Yeah, I know. I know I can. I know there's royalty-free music out there. I just haven't had the time to, like, go through and find it. All right. So these, these dorks are attacking for lethal. Listen, I've been pretty adamant about both Blood Moon being bad in the current format and just, like, thinking that it's not good against decks like this that people think it's good against. So... So, I'm not going to play music all of the time, Waffle, because I know playing music all of the time isn't good, but I think, like, a low, like, carnival music clown car undertone when we're in situations like we were just in would be fitting. And hearing pretty unanimous consensus that fetching isn't very relevant, but that playing a 61st card is horrible and should never happen. Um, so... Your deck is designed to do the same thing every game, right? And playing 61 cards, generally speaking, if you're not playing a toolbox of some sort, kind of represents or sends the message that you don't want to do the same thing every game because you... And, okay, so here's... All right, what's the best way to put this? Consistent decks aren't just four ofs. Consistent decks have consistent strategies. So in addition to those four ofs, they, they have four ofs that are similar to each other. So really, your deck is like eight ofs and stuff like that. It's like eight good aggressive creatures and things of that nature. So this is a counter spell. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do, Tardis. I want to play specific songs in specific situations. Oop. Yes, I never, I never intend to play music all of the time, but I think when I'm sitting there vigorously clicking, playing clown music in the background is like appropriate and amusing. I don't, I don't think I would ever want to have music constantly, but I think using the occasional bits of, of royalty-free music for comedic effect has good value. This hand's great. Needs a mana creature, but it's got, uh, it's got silence and an abundant growth in it. I also agree, and a lot of, a lot of streamers don't use royalty-free music. A lot of streamers steal music and use music that's not theirs. You can macro sound bites to your keyboard. I mean, why would I need to use Corsair for that? Like, I just, I could just create a key binding. Tom and Gather, thank you for the 26 month free subscription. Don't get to watch much lately, but came around here to press this button. Gotta earn my castle eventually. I appreciate the over two years of support there. Welcome back. You could maybe argue that I should have led on abundant growth on one here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and shock in this Steam Vents first here because I want to discourage my opponent from countering this Abundant Growth because I really want this Abundant Growth to resolve. Yeah, I should I should get a soundboard. I, I soundboard at some point. I'm like we're slowly adding things. There's only there's only so much time in the day to add do things that add value to the stream. So it's a gradual process. Uh, I think Fate Stitcher is better than Sleight of Hand here. Maybe I could be misevaluating where we're, where we're at in the game and what's important. It's also possible like my opponent has graveyard hate and like isn't gonna tap out to leave Fate Stitcher as an out now. Now that they've been got by that. Yeah, maybe I should have just taken the sleight of hand. Opponent has yet to apply pressure this game, so I think I'm just okay hanging out for now. Just looking for a land at the moment. Uh, no, the record command is wrong. We're 2-2. We're two two. This is match 5. We're 2-2 two and, two and we're up a game in this 5th match. Which was the original question. The original question, and okay, I'm not going to get worked up about it, is I am not here to do the math homework for you. This is not do math homework channel. Please, please ask your question somewhere else. What you're asking is a statistics question, and I am not teaching a statistics class. We are currently playing Magic. Although, you, I guess you could argue I get paid more to play Magic than I did to teach statistics classes. So, basically, basically, um... 
The, the answer is long and complicated and requires you to have a good fundamental, fundamental understanding of statistics in general. And I don't have time to teach that right now to you. So please uh, do some homework on your own. Sorry, I was, I got more worked up there than I needed to be, but just, you know, do a, do a little lake work, please show some effort. Don't be lazy. Undefeated with the $17 donation. I'm a liar and I think this ties it up. I don't care who wins. I just want to encourage democracy. It does tie it up there both at 131. <laughs> all right i got nothing to do here just keep doing this you could maybe argue that i'm supposed to slight a hand first here yeah i think i'm supposed to slight a hand first to hit a land it's probably what's supposed to happen we're very dead at this point It's, yeah, it's, it's awkward. I'm going to go ahead and submit it. All right. All right. This one's for all the, all the bananas here. Any recommendations for online learnings about statistics? I don't have any offhand. All of my education was in a formal classroom setting. My my master's degree is in mathematics, so I've taken a number of statistics class on the way up. I'm okay, Mardu Mini. Have mercy, I have a child. My boss still hasn't messaged me back. She's probably in meetings. This hand's pretty good if it finds some lands. Need to, if we hit if we hit a green source next turn, we're in a very good spot. Black green rock. Thank you, Cade's world. Perfect. If they have a spell snare, we're going to be a little sad, but sand spell snare will be in a good spot here. And we're not, we're not playing around spell snare. I have been sent to jam. Y'all ready for the space jam? We're fetching temple garden explicitly because if we fetch breeding pool, we can't cast ascendancy without casting manamorphose. So, because I only have this one Ascendancy here, I'm going to wait and get set up here a little bit. We can look for another land and a Silence here, most likely, I think. I'm going to grab a Steam Vents. I'm going to cast Sleight of Hand, and then I'm going to cast Serum Visions. Curiated does die to anger. Am I getting mana? I'm getting remanded? Deal. And now, because I can't cast another cantrip this turn, I'm going to Serum Visions here because I want to... Uh, what's the word that I'm searching for? I want to um, set up my draw for next turn, potentially. So let's lead on this. Uh, 
Huh. I think we're still just setting up for next turn. I don't really want to fetch shock again here because my health total is getting a little precarious. Okay, and looking for one of our four copies of Silence. Hmm, play this out. It gives us extra mana if they can't kill it. Probably dead, but we'll see here. Matt Maxson with the tenor, giving Mardu that last little push. And remember, chat, whatever deck loses will be the first deck tomorrow. It'll be, it'll be up tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we we'll love it. Tomorrow, it's only a day away. Bye, Ascendancy. Bye, Ascendancy. I don't want to have to wake up at 10 a.m., but tomorrow isn't now. That's true. That's true. Can I donate to subtract points from a deck? That's not, that is not how the rules work here. That's adorable. Okay, if we find another Ascendancy next turn, they're likely dead. I guess I should have taken the Glittering Wish. Man, that's rough. No, no back Mardu Demons. Green black will guide us into tomorrow. <laughs> that was for green black, just so I understand, Godmaker, right? That was for green black. Sounds good. So I think I'm just going to pass here. You could maybe make an argument for playing this Noble Hierarch, but I kind of want to play it to loot through next turn. They got your card. I did pick up stuff in the P.O. box. You sent the one for the Reflector Spirits, right? We started with that today, and the league was a little bit Towards Madu. Thank you, Konamis. So, we have to chump block this this turn. They have Anger. Okay. Yeah, we're probably dead. This was really close. Yeah, close game opponent. If we would have... If we would have hit Ascendancy one card sooner, or Glittering Wish one card sooner, or found actual Ascendancy, we'd have been, we'd have been fine. Yeah, it's, a, it's the American Democratic system. All right. All right. Um... Thoughts on JAC? Uh, I, th I think I like the packs. I think my gut that the packs are good is correct. Um, I think when we cut the Fate Stitchers, 
Just making sure Dragon and Ghost win by far in the democracy. Thank you, Fallen Dark. They are far and ahead. Um, I think uh, cutting the nagging thoughts in the Fate Stitchers was super wrong, but I do still kind of like the Summoner's Pact with the one Eternal Witness in the deck. So, I think I was pretty happy with the 75. And honestly, while the League result wasn't that good, I don't think I would. I honestly might update this to be on the website. Because I really like how the pack slot in here. Someone mentioned Pact of the Titan again. Just to close on Pact of the Titan. The reason why Summoner's Pact is good is not only because it's free, but also because but also because it um, it replaces itself with another card. So also because it replaces itself with another card. Alright, I'm gonna close the bidding. We're playing four color and then green black. I'm sorry, Mardu. Um if 